Hey guys, so um, this is essentially part one of a two-part declutter slash organization. I will be showing you guys my bookshelf in the video after this one, but I kind of wanted to show you guys how many books I decluttered today. This is my first declutter in the last few months. I've gone through and just kind of was very honest with myself about which books I'm actually going to read and which ones I'm not going to read. Um, and so this is the final declutter and it's probably the biggest one. I mean, I, I got rid of a bunch of books. If you compare like my first kind of um, bookshelf tour, and to now, like you're gonna see which books have left, which ones have come out. There is some empty space um, on my bookshelf now that I can actually fill with books that I really want to read. So the first book I'm getting rid of is Throttled by Lauren Asher, and it is um, a TikTok book series. It's a dual POV, like most of these are, between Maya and Maya, between Maya and Noah, and it's a Formula One type. Um, themed romance book and I didn't like it I think I read up to like I don't know maybe like 50 pages or something and it was kind of painful in the sense that one she's trying to be like a vlogger and just the depiction of that is kind of cringy to me I know that vlogger is becoming like a regular job now and it's fine like I do YouTube I talk about it it's great but there is something cringy about it being in the book if it's written by someone who's never been a vlogger and as far as I know um, Lauren Asher hasn't been like a YouTuber or anything so it's just always really cringe. Two, in the first 50 pages it's immediately just like straight into not like smut but just straight into like they're clearly just into each other's looks and that's fine but I just want a little bit of development or something, a little bit of a slow burn. The F1 aspect of it, like I do enjoy watching F1 races just when they happen but I'm not like you know what I mean? Like, it's just a lot. I don't know. This book just didn't speak to me. So, I love how floppy it is. And I'm just going to be selling um, a lot of these books on Depop or eBay. It's kind of what I like to do. So, I'll do that. I'm getting rid of Tilly Cole, A Thousand Boy Kisses. Um, this has been recommended on TikTok and on YouTube as, like, a book that's going to make you cry. I just don't really want that i feel like that's gonna i don't know yeah they like me and it's like they've known each other for ages and then they kind of end up falling in love or something apparently it's really sad i just don't really like reading books that are gonna make me cry i don't know i just don't have a lot of that on my bookshelf because it's just not something that i like to do with my life it's not what i like to do with my time um i also have a non-fiction book called why men love bitch and up top it says over one million copies sold that's fun. Uh, From Doormat to Dream Girl, A Woman's Guide to Holding Her Own in a Relationship. It's by Sherry Argov and I read it because it was really popular on TikTok because it's kind of like a funny book. Like it's like funny in the sense that if you don't take it too seriously, it's a fun read. But if you take it really seriously, you're going to end up being a woman who, I don't know, just does things because that's what will attract a man rather than doing things because like I think there is something to be said about like definitely don't let a man walk all over you and like all of this stuff that's in this book obviously but there's also something about like um changing what you want to do so that a man thinks x y and z or doesn't think x y and z and then you have to kind of maintain that throughout the relationship that sounds really tiring to me i don't want to pretend to be someone i'm not in a relationship but it was a fun read i always I like reading these kinds of books because I don't personally take them too seriously but I think if you're gonna like read this and it become like your whole personality then maybe don't. Uh, but I will be selling that because I've already read it and I just don't care to keep it on my bookshelf. I'm gonna sell The Hating Game. I gave this like a three star. I think when I first read it it was like a four. Then I gave it a three. Now looking back on it, I don't know. It's basically a rivalry between two people in like a merged company. They're going off to the same position and it's between Lucy and Joshua. And I think it was fine. Um, I think it's like a three star read for me. It's nothing I'm super, super obsessed with, but it's also not something that I'm like, ew. And I think there was something about the ending that I didn't like. Um, yeah, I don't know. There was something I didn't like about the ending. I just had to read a few bits. Um, something about the ending that I was like, mm, that was a bit of a, I think it was like how quickly the ending happened. Like how kind of quickly it progressed and suddenly they were in love and I think that's what that was. Anyway, I thought it was fine. It was a fine read. I think it's a cute like summertime little romance thing if you love an enemies to lovers but that's it. I'm getting rid of it. I don't need it on my bookshelf. This is a fantasy duology. I'm not sure if like more has come out. It's by Tommy Adeyemi and it's um children oh children of blood and bone and children of virtue and vengeance this was really popular on book talk i'm just off fantasy so i've kept like a few bits and pieces of fantasy but i'm really i've just come off fantasy completely i don't know why maybe i'll come back to it at a later date in a few years time etc i just know that i won't pick up 
these bulky books um, anytime soon. And I think someone else will really like reading them. They look brand new because they basically are brand new. And I think someone will love these. I've heard great things. I just don't really have, I just know that I, I won't get to them anytime soon. We have The Afterlife of Holly Chase. This was kind of recommended on booktube a few years back. My one comes with these like frayed edges. Is it gonna focus? Hello. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's got like frayed edges, which I think is kind of cute. It did make picking up like the page difficult because they almost stick together a little bit. It's by Cynthia Hand. It's about like a Scrooge, this like very rich entitled girl, like for Christmas becomes a Scrooge and she like dies and she's in the afterlife and she goes and like helps um, like mean people become good people and she shows them like what their future holds and stuff. And then she falls in love with someone that she's like, helping out essentially and I thought it was fine I think it like if I rank, rated this now it would be like a three star or something I thought it was okay I read it all in like one sitting so that speaks volumes I also had Heretics Anonymous um there was also a booktube pick it's about this like catholic school and he's an atheist he goes to a catholic school he basically starts this club with a bunch of people that like wouldn't typically be like catholic so there's like um some outcast there's something i'm like i just don't think i'm gonna get to it i haven't gotten to this in the last like five years i just don't think i'll get to this anytime soon so i think while it's in an amazing state someone will love to read this persuade me to keep this on my bookshelf persuade me please i love the cover it's law by alexandra brecken you may deny the fates but they will not deny you fighting them will not save you from what is ahead it's a full-on fiction fantasy it's mythology. I don't know. It's just so many pages of fantasy. It's almost 500 pages, which is fine, usually, typically. But because I'm already like off fantasy, I just can't get myself to commit to it. But it looks amazing and it's been on my bookshelf for a while. And this was on like the maybe pile today, but it just ended up getting decluttered. So persuade me. Give me a one, one sentence, you know, little why I should read this or why I should not read this like if I'm doing a good thing getting rid of it do do let me know I've tried to like obviously go on goodreads with all of these and check the ratings and stuff I also had these which I mainly got because they looked really nice this is a winter's promise and the missing of Claire de Lune um which is book one and book two of the mirror visitor by Christelle Davos and I think it was translated originally from French and um some, there's something about French art that tends to be quite slow burny but in like a like it's just more like a character like description or like you're following it's not much plot like I think that's kind of she's very slow and beautiful and stuff and that's fine I just because I've come off fantasy and these are so chunky I feel like I would just not be able to sit through it because I'm already so like I don't know that's just what I think these are like 500 pages as well which is usually fine. I'm not saying I only read 200 page books, but I think it's already something that you're kind of like dreading getting into it being so long and two books doesn't help. And then a YouTuber that I watch, a booktuber gave it a three star. So I was like, maybe not. Um, so I will get rid of those. I think someone will enjoy reading them. Then we have Shock and Horror, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Why would I do that? Are you wondering? It's because this is the first edition with the like weird cover and like the flap that's not like finished. Um, so I'm getting rid of this one because she has come out with editions that are like all the same. Um, she kind of like printed the same publication, which I'm assuming at this point, and they all kind of have the same vibe to them. This sounds really stupid, but I want them to look the same because I put this with the other books and it looked really dumb. So I'm just gonna, I've ordered on Depop from someone else. We're doing a little swap here. This is the new edition. I like Taylor Jenkins Reid. I like the way she writes her books. This is obviously the first book I read from her and I read it pretty much in like one sitting. So um, I definitely want it. I'm not getting rid of it because I don't like it. I love how floppy it is though. I just wish it didn't have this notch here and I wish it wasn't this like weird scratchy like, um, cover but if she had kept it this floppy i would have loved that but it's not this floppy it's different anyway i'm getting a new one so someone will enjoy reading that from me i've decided i'm finally going to get rid of the cassandra claire mortal instruments books oh there's another one there's six of them and they were just taking up space in my bookshelf i bought these probably five or so years ago um it was in like the thick of um booktube i have a bunch of her books on audio like a bunch of like ones after the mortal instruments because they always go on sale 
on Audible. And I might just either find these on Audible as well or like on Kindle or something. They do, I just don't need them taking up space on my precious bookshelf. I don't have much space. So for now, I'm just going to get rid of them. Sadly, because I just don't want them taking up space. I want, like, these are six books that I could, like, I don't know how to explain this. These are like taking up six books worth of space, obviously, because they're six books. And I'd rather have a different set of six books on my bookshelf than these. So I'll still get around to Cassandra Clare at some point, maybe, when I come back to fantasy. But I just don't want her books taking up so much space on my bookshelves. Because if I wanted to buy a physical of every single one of her books, I'd have like 30. Like one of these whole shelves would just be Cassandra Clare. And I'm not that big of a stan. Actually, I've never read any single one of her books. So I'm not a stan at all. This was also a booktube pick. It's Nevermore. Wanda Smith and Hollow Parks. It's like a trilogy. It's supposed to be similar to Harry Potter in a sense. It's kind of like um, middle grade, middle school type books. And I've just kind of come off reading YA slash children's books, unless it isn't that Harry Potter, which has more of a nostalgia feel to me, just because I can't relate to it anymore. If I read something new now, it needs to be kind of within my age range. And if I'm rereading something, it's fine if it's YA or even middle grade. But if I'm reading something brand brand new and there's no nostalgia for me, I just can't relate to a young character. Like, I just can't do it anymore. So, I'm kind of giving that to someone else if someone will buy it. I picked up one of these, Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. And obviously I love Gone Girl the movie. But because I've watched it so many times, I just feel like... Oh wow, wait. I just opened it, started reading it. Seems to be written really well. I might, I've changed my mind, I might read, but I've already seen the movie. It's dual POV. Hmm. Okay, I've changed my mind. I might keep this and read it just because I've already seen the movie. I was kind of like, let me get rid of it, but it's written quite well. I just had a little sneak peek. I don't know where to fit it though. I guess I'll just put it here for now. And I'll read that when I get to it. So those are all the books I'm getting rid of. Uh, let me know if you kind of like any of these, you dislike any of these. So I filmed my declutter yesterday and then I went um, into my storage where I kept my other books that I've been decluttering and I found the rest of them so I decided to show you guys what else I'm getting rid of because I did mention that those were not all the books I was getting rid of, so there's more. Today I decided to also get rid of this book that I found randomly. I thought it looked so pretty, it's called Hourglass, but it looks like it's just like a collection of little like almost poems, uh, kind of like essays, think pieces. This is not my type of book, so I'm getting rid of that. I'm also getting rid of my after series. Uh, so we have before, after, after we collided, after we fell, and after ever happy. Um, I read after, twice, after we collided, almost twice, once, and then 75% the second time because I wanted to restart the series so that I could finish it. And I, I just hated the second book on the second time round. I just couldn't stand the relationship. Like, I love a toxic book. I love a toxic situation in a book. But this was just frustrating, it was annoying, it was boring, it was just like reading the same thing. It was way too long, it was about 200 pages w too long, way too long. And I just couldn't stand it anymore, so I just stopped and I've been decluttering the whole series. I've also got um, Renegades and Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. If you like these, let me know. Um, because I was also going to declutter... Where is it? Um, Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I put it back on my shelf. I said I was going to declutter it and then I found it today in my pile of declutter books. I just thought it looked kind of cool so I might keep it. And if you guys have anything good to say about these before I sell them, let me know. I might sell them by then. So then we have City of Brass. I just don't really care enough. It's fantasy. You guys get what I'm saying. And Red Queen. Um, I've had some decent things about this but not enough to keep me that interested. So I might keep these in the maybe pile for now and then see how I feel. I was just hanging out today and I realized that I'm decluttering even more um, books and I found them under my bed where I kind of have storage space and yeah I just found a box of more books that I was going to declutter. I thought I already got rid of them. 
turns out I didn't. This is how unorganized I am in everything I do. So I'm just gonna show them to you guys. And Phoebe, you wanna say hello? You wanna say hello? No, you can't have my scrunchie. You can't have my scrunchie, no. No, okay. You wanna stay right here? You wanna stay right here? You want to stay right here, yeah. Through my very limited time on booktube, I have been offered a few different PR boxes. And they're usually for smaller publications or like just smaller, yeah, smaller publications because I'm like a smaller channel. So they were just like, hey, do you want to read some stuff? And that was kind of my bad, my mistake, I guess, in the sense that I am very particular about the things that I want to read and don't want to read. And I don't really like the element of surprise necessarily. And I think... I'm just not a great candidate for that kind of stuff because I just I'm so particular about what I want to contribute like hours of time to if that makes sense like I think if it's just like a lipstick or something it's easy to just try it on and move on with your life but with books it's definitely just more of like a process I was sent a few different books I was sent Unpregnant which I'm not a massive fan of like the idea of having children or being pregnant or anything surrounding pregnancy if in a romantic book pregnancy pops up I maybe like dock half points because that's just and it's not even like it's a problem with the book necessarily it's a problem with me I can't so essentially she gets pregnant and wants to get an abortion which like already just isn't like I'm so pro-choice but like just isn't really my idea for like a book that I want to read the closest clinic is 900 miles away and she takes her best friend Bailey and they go on like a road trip essentially to get rid of this child and something about that just doesn't really sound like something i would want to read then we have the loop which looks really cool um but it's about um luca kane will die in the loop a prison controlled by artificial inter <coughs> so it's about ai um the laces execution are granted if he submits to medical experiments but escape is made impossible by the detonator sewn into his heart it's kind of like a sci-fi book you guys know me and sci-fi not besties this is not the end um <laughs> allergies are going crazy today um ever since the sudden death of his parents 17 year old hugh has developed a serious preoccupation with endings one that gets a little complicated when he discovers that high school outcast olivia moon can't die hugh agrees to drive olivia to new york to retrieve a crate of her most treasured possessions excuse me stealing her sister's precious ice cream van in the process but the road to new york city is bumpy and full of unexpected turns including hugh's growing feelings for olivia as the van hurtles towards the finishing line of an unforgettable road trip hugh has to face his ultimate fear unsatisfying messy endings might just be an inevitable part of life i think it's like a great like ya vibe for like understanding life and like all that stuff but not necessarily something i want to read then we have the Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. Not my best introduction to Christina Lauren. This is the first Christina Lauren book I read. Super floppy. You guys know how I feel about those. This one was great. Um, it was very comfortable to read. I read this about an, a year and a half ago. I haven't forgotten about it in the worst way possible. Um, I just, this was such an unsatisfying romance book. By the like conflict act that turns into like the resolution slash then goes into the happy ending. I wanted this couple to perish. Like not them as people, but kind of. I wanted that whole relationship thrown in the bin. I could not root for them. Oh my God. There was just so much there. Um, such unlikable characters. And yeah, I did not root for the couple. Like, after the conflict, even though, like, everything was like, oh, you know, we're saying sorry and all of this stuff. Like, I I was over it at that point. I'm not going to spoil anything for you because that's, like, the whole point of the thing. But the Unhoneymooners are about, they're, like, enemies because of a miscommunication. And it was such a stupid miscommunication. And they go to this wedding and everyone gets sick. They have to take the honeymoon and go on it. Even though they dislike each other because of a miscommunication. And then it's an enemies to lovers based on a stupid, stupid, stupid miscommunication. And then, um, the, like, last, like, third... No, the last like quarter. Yeah, like the last like quarter or third or something just absolutely sucks bum. I gave this like a two star. Because I think I enjoyed myself for like two thirds. And then I just couldn't like bring it back around. I think it's like when you're super desperate to create like conflict to have a resolution for. Where you kind of lose me. This is actually a Netflix series right now. It's called Partner Track. And they just sent me the like 
copy that was obviously not one that's like super for sale or like maybe they're just like the first copy that they had i there's something about this size it really doesn't do it for me like you know how regular books are somewhat like a little bit bigger like this one just is why is there just a piece of hair on my lip that i'm trying to desperately get off and i can't anyway um yeah this size is really odd um but yeah you can get this now like out and about oh so she's a lawyer and they have to go head to head with another lawyer on a big case and she wants to come out on top and i guess they both just oh close proxim forced proximity they're like in the hotel room alone with in only one bed they're doing all the like typical stuff this kind of reminds me of the hating game i actually really wasn't necessarily super interested cinder um which is marissa meyer the lunar chronicles this was massive on booktube ages ago which is why i got it originally it's um it's a series based on like typical fairy tales like this is obviously cinderella cinder but it's a sci-fi and it's about like cyborgs and stuff i just don't it's too late i should have read it when this was first blowing up and i just didn't so we have the selection series i got this because it was blown up on booktube ages ago hello phoebe you want to be involved it's too late for me now this is a ya like i can't apparently it's really stupid as well like kind of not stupid that's mean i'm being so mean today i i need to turn it down apparently it's quite silly because it is a ya um and i just can't so her name is america america singer and guess where she's from america and guess where she wants to become a singer and her name's america singer like i just can't sorry moving on i should have just never bought these but you live and you learn i've also got hush hush this was also massive on youtube ages ago and it's kind of giving slight twilight vibes kind of like where it's like supernatural type romances and yeah the situation about the fallen and the immortal and some kind of a battle and like that's all cool and well yeah fallen angel forbidden love Maybe in another lifetime I would have read this, but I haven't. Becoming by Michelle Obama. I've realized I, when it comes to nonfiction, I like to listen to on audio, almost like a podcast, instead of actually physically reading it. So I'm sure someone will want to obviously read this and I'll just read it on audio. Um, this one I got ages ago. One, it looked really pretty. And two, um, I just liked these kinds of books. Um, this is called Why Women Don't Owe You. No. This one's called Women Don't Owe You Pretty and it's by Florence Given. And uh yeah, it just kind of looks a bit like a magazine with all the like extra like bits and bobs in it. I think this is kind of like feminism basics. Like for example, one chapter is called Are They Intimidating or Am I Intimidated? Feminism is going to ruin your life in the best way possible. Women don't owe you pretty, but you are the love of your own life. How to break up with yourself. Refuse to find comfort in other women's flaws. Like this, I would maybe have given to myself when I was like 15, 14, just like figuring like feminism out and like learning about it for the first time. And like, you know what I mean? But like once you're kind of a woman for a while and if you have been in the know, then you're in the know. And I feel like this would just repeat stuff that I already kind of know. And it's just making me not want to read this book also let's all collectively look at phoebe phoebe hello oh my goodness this is a little baby show your little face show your little face you got a groom today you look so beautiful you got big ears yeah you helping me out you helping me out okay Popping in one last time because I went through my bookshelves again, rearranged them again, and decluttered again. I like to do this in sections. I like to do this on never like an inspiration strike. I think I'm getting rid of this one. It's called The Bay uh, by Ali Reynolds. Now this was actually a pretty like 3.5 star read for me, but because it's like a mystery, typically I don't reread these because like the mystery is already solved. Um, so I might just get rid of this. It's just taking up space on the bookshelf that could be used for other mysteries. And I bet someone else will love to read this like brand new, basically untouched book. Hardback and everything. It's going on my Depop, I think. Well, I remember once I got this for like three pounds in like a thrift shop and I'm just not gonna read it. It's called The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. How little things can make a big difference. Controversial, I'm getting rid of It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover, even though I have all the Colleen Hoover books. And it's because this one actually, <laughs> is the paperback and i have the hardback of it starts with us and i'm kind of one of those weirdos that wants them to match and these obviously don't match at all so i'm just gonna sell this um to someone that might want to read it it's never read it and this one actually got half price as well which is such a good deal these are on the chopping block they're going it's the bear and the nightingale the winter of the witch and the girl in the tower it's like a 
it's like a trilogy because I'm not super into fantasy anymore. So I'm just gonna get rid of these. I don't think I'll get round to them. Last time I told you guys I'm, I was gonna get rid of this and then I kept it and now I'm getting rid of it again. I've seen the movie about 10,000 times. I don't care how well written this is. I'm just going to get rid of it. This um, series, someone might wanna buy this. Um, it's the like Charlotte Holmes series. It's essentially like a retelling of Sherlock from the perspective. My nose is so itchy. This is A Question of Holmes, The Case for Jamie, The Last of August, and A Study in Charlotte. I think I said them like in the wrong. They're like this way. So I'm getting rid of them. Someone else, what, what, someone else might want to read them. This was a really good YA mystery um, series that I liked at the time, but I think like I'm never going to reread it again. Um, it got quite weak towards the end. And if I want to reread like a YA cozy mystery, I have my Truly Devious series, which is actually good, like a, an even better YA series. So I'm getting rid of the Cruel Prince, Wicked King and Queen of Nothing series. This is also YA fantasy. It's got like a good introduction to fantasy for people. Um, I probably just will never read this. I know it's super hyped up, but it was super hyped up and I missed the hype train. And now I'm like almost too old for it. I just don't really care anymore. And those are the ones I'm getting rid of. Subscribe but like for engagement. I will try to post more. And I've been gone for like four months. And that was kind of rude. Um, but I just was in a reading slump. And I couldn't figure out what to post. I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.